Welcome back to another chat with the Buttes with the 716 Sports Podcast. This is a signing that happened quite a while ago, but we are finally getting a chance to have a conversation with Whitney Dove. Whitney, thanks so much for taking some time out to chat with us. We're excited that you're signed in Buffalo and excited that you're taking a few minutes to talk with us tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's start with the the kind of process of, of getting signed in Buffalo. So talk about obviously a college career at Providence. We'll get into that a little bit, but uh, going from Providence College to signing a pro contract in Buffalo. Walk us through the steps and how excited you are to be, uh, to be coming here. Yeah, well, after I finished at Providence, I definitely knew that I wanted to keep playing. Um, I didn't know where exactly, and some of the coaches in the NWHL had reached out to me, and I, I talked a lot with the, with the Buffalo coaches and the GM, and they all seemed super cool. And so I was just like, I'm going to go to Buffalo. And I'm super excited for the season. And those conversations may have been with Mandy, right? That was before Mandy slid over to Toronto. Yeah, I talked with her too, yeah. And now, I mean, we all love Nate Oliver. It's so awesome mm-hmm. that he's going to be the GM. Not, Mandy is awesome too. I didn't mean for it to sound that way, but we're excited <laughs> to have you come to Buffalo for sure. Mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, so your your career at Providence as – a defender still racked up 79 points uh, a lot. So we, we, we did the same thing when we uh, talked uh, with Kelly O'Sullivan, like talk to us about how you racked up your points. Was it, uh, you know, point shots that deflected or is it breakout passes where, you know, where are you hoping to contribute offensively for this Buttes team? Um, yeah, I definitely love shooting from the point. Um, but I also like to just get involved in the offense. Like I'm not afraid to, you know, pinch down or get a loose puck and just take it to the net. So that's kind of how I got my points. And then also just, you know, looking for tips for from the forwards. I think that I definitely contribute a lot from there as well. Yeah, 113 shots on net in your last season at Providence. That's quite a high number for uh, mm-hmm. 36 games. So you, must, so you must be pretty good at getting a quick shot off. Do you focus on power or just a – a low wrister through traffic. What, what's, what's your strategy there? Um, I do a little bit of both. Um, when there's not a lot of time, like I think I'm really good at getting a quick shot off, but if I have time, then I like to really load her up. So I remember my question. I wanted to piggy off Steve, piggyback off Steve's question is uh, when, when you uh, got to Providence, the NWHL was first, was just getting started. Uh, was, was the NWHL on your radar uh, when, you, when you started your college career? Um, no, it actually wasn't at all, really. I didn't know much about it, but uh, going into my senior year, a couple of my previous teammates were playing in the league, and so I heard about it through that, and and then after I graduated, I kind of looked more into it. So the Buttes are up to eight defenders signed, and we know injuries happen, and uh, there's a, a potential for players to move around a little bit, but it feels like there's going to be some real competition as far as eight skaters trying to fill six spots. But uh, so what, what do you bring? What's the dynamic that Whitney Dove brings to the game? What's going to be your bread and butter for uh, making this roster? You're going to, you're going to make the lineup because you are fantastic at or really good at or really focused on what? Um, Yeah, I think I really take pride in being a offensive defenseman. So just, not being afraid to jump up in the play, be that fourth attacker. Um, and I also play a pretty physical game, so I'm not afraid to, like, get in the corners and get in the nitty-gritty areas. I didn't want to bring up the Pims, but they showed up. <laughs> when I, so when I was doing a little research this afternoon, I didn't want to bring up the Pims. We were pushing 50, some seasons 49. And yeah. I, 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 listen, I, I didn't want to take any shots across the bow here. But since you opened the door, are you a victim of circumstance here, or do you like to uh, throw the body a little bit? Yeah, I definitely like to throw the body. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of those penalties were body checking or something along those lines. So we'll we'll keep that in the uh, in the pocket, <laughs> Justin, for these for the games we call. When we see someone get blown up, we'll just assume Whitney through the check. <laughs> I, need a, I need a lot of ice time during Riveters games. 
Those get pretty yeah. hot sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so growing up, uh, who was your favorite team? Um, I never had a really one favorite team. I kind of bounced around. Uh, I lived in Toronto for a bit, so I was a Toronto fan. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> and then the Canucks for a bit while they were doing well but um right now cup run against Boston yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) now I'm um I'm in big into the Colorado Avalanche they're a good team. Did you see Cal McCarr's goal last night? Yeah, I'm a huge uh, Cal McCarr fan. Embarrassing so. <laughs> people out there. It's not even fair. Yeah, coast to coast. Great. And poor Alex Goligoski still trying to retie his skates after that because that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. One of the areas the Buttes struggled in, and they're not afraid to talk about it or mention it, it, was breaking out of their own end last year. There was time and time. Again, Justin and I are watching the game, calling the game, and they're just lacking that breakout pass, and it either misses – and ends up coming right back in, or because it's not on the tape, it kind of slows down the rush the other way. So talk to us about your experience getting out of the zone. Are you someone that's going to carry the puck because you said you'd like to be the fourth skater on the rush, or do you look for that breakout pass? And obviously that's going to be an area where any team's going to want to be better in because that's going to lead to success or failure, as we kind of saw with the Buttes last season. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely look for the pass if it's there, but I'm not afraid to just skate it out myself if, if we're getting stuck in there. Um, skate it up a bit and then hope, and, hope that something else will open up. Now, and it's you, tough. Go ahead, Justin. Well, now you go ahead, Steve. Just, it was kind of a follow-up. If uh, We don't get to see much, unfortunately, as far as tapes. Are, are you, you consider yourself fast. Don't be humble. Be honest. Are you, if you're an offensive defender and you like to break out and you like to join the rush, so you got some wheels, you're going to fly? Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty fast. All right. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Mm-hmm. I was curious to ask an offensive defender, like, do you prefer to be paired with another offensive defender or do you like another stay-at-home player to, to, to stay at home while you're up the ice? Or do you like to have a, an, an offensive player with you that you can trust with the puck on the stick and you can wheel up the ice with? Um, that's, it's a a tough one, but I think I'd rather be with a stay at home defender just so I know that if I'm going in, then they're going to be back and, uh, and have my back instead of us kind of competing with who's going to rush up. So definitely someone that, but someone that can feed me the puck on the blue line too. From the outside looking in and Justin, I'm not trying to speak for you. I'm excited by how many puck moving defenders the Buttes have now. The concern mm-hmm. is a log jam. And the first thing that I think about is power play time um, because, mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully there can be a rotation if, if someone's, you know, you can have, maybe it'll be two defenders on the point for the first power play too. I don't know. Um, but mm-hmm. there's a whole lot of puck moving defenders. And uh, so did you play power play time at Providence? I'm guessing you played some significant power play time with the yeah. amount of shots on goal you had. And obviously mm-hmm. it's got to be a hope and a goal for you to crack a power play unit with the Buttes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, so, back to when you were young, Whitney, what got you into playing hockey as a kid? Um, My brother played, so I kind of watched him uh, get into it, and then I decided that I wanted to start as well. Um, I played, when I first started, I was playing with the girls, but then when I moved to Vancouver, I played with the boys for, I think, four years until Bantam, or, yeah. So I think playing with the boys really actually helped me because they were, you know, a lot tougher. And (laughs) so I think that's where I kind of got my grittiness from. And Justin and I talked to Aventa Klimasova a couple of weeks ago, and she mentioned in school, and you can correct me if I'm not getting this exactly right, Justin, in school, she was the only girl in a classroom of like 24 students. (laughs) So we were like, you know, where did you come? She's kind of, she's got a physique. She plays tough. She, she's, strong and she's like well I was surrounded Mm -hmm. by boys in school every day so Mm -hmm. I definitely can see you know can see the correlation there for for you and for her as well Mm -hmm. yeah definitely is there a a player a female or male that you try to model your game after um well right now I'd say I'm I look up to Kale McCarr I think he's an awesome offensive defenseman so we're gonna need some of the. We're gonna need to see some of those dangles on the end. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Got the silky mitts. Yep. Yeah. 
So uh, coming to Buffalo training camp, hopefully soon, obviously COVID has everything kind of up in the air, but who are you familiar with coming into camp? If anybody, who are you looking forward to getting on the ice with? Of course, you're excited to join the team in any activities, but is there, are there some players that you're familiar with who are either veterans or, or some of the rookie class coming in with you who you either have experience playing with or are very excited to take the ice with? Um, yeah, so I played obviously with Cass McPherson and Nev mm-hmm. at, at Providence, so mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think MJ, she, I remember playing against her and she was always a really good defender. So She's unreal. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with her. Just, just tipping the cards a little bit. It was always when we'd watch MJ start a breakout or, you know, a lot of times on the power play, if the Butte started in their own end, MJ would be the one to lug the puck and get it moving. And mm-hmm. it was, you knew something good might happen because she's so dynamic with the puck and she's mm-hmm. quick and she makes good decisions with the puck. Um, both in her own end and in the offensive zone. I'm excited for skaters like you to be coming along and more offensively minded defenders that are going to help hopefully move the puck and, uh, and create those breakouts and generate things in all three phases and all three aspects of the ring. So I'm excited for that. There's going to be some good puck moving out of the beat zone end this year. Mm-hmm, yeah, for sure. So when you get the puck, what's your first objective? You're looking up the ice or you just look, you look up the ice and make a stretch pass, make a big play. Or you just look to make a simple play and say, get the puck out of the zone kind of play? Um, I'd say I look for the, the nice, you know, stretch pass or the the nice play. But obviously, if it's not there, I'm not going to make it. And I would just – She'll just skate it 200 feet and <laughs> score herself the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. She didn't say no. She didn't say no. So. <laughs> What are you most concerned about? If concerned isn't the right word, what are you maybe even most excited about? We can go either way with it or both. What has you concerned? What has you excited about jumping into the pro league now coming out of of NCAA hockey? What are some of the things that you're really stoked about? What are some of the things that you are reserved or cautious or whatever concerned about making the jump from college to pro? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just you know, interested to see how, what the speed is like in comparison and, and also like the physicality. Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm excited for both of those things just to, and to play against like some really, really high skilled players. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it will help me improve as a player. As well. Have you ever been to Buffalo? Have you ever played here or anything? Um, I did have a tournament there. Yeah. When, in my uh, grade 12 year, I played for the Pacific Steelers, and I believe we had a, a showcase tournament in Buffalo. Do you remember what rank you played on? Um, it was a big one. I can't remember what it was no, called. No, it was way back, you know, five years ago. Yeah. Uh, cast the memory <laughs> way back there. Yeah, I'm not sure. There was, like, a couple of different rinks in, in – Might have been area. North Town Center. Might have been. Might have been Fort Butte. <laughs> Is there any uh, thing, anything about Buffalo you're looking forward to coming to see? Anything, uh, anything from Cassidy? Like you gotta go check this place out when you get here. Anything like that? Um, not really. I mean, she's said a lot of good things, so I'm just excited to kind of see what the atmosphere in Buffalo is like. Are you a foodie? Are you a big fan of? Because that's one of the things that we hang our hat on. Obviously, is wings and beef on weck and all the Buffalo staples for food mm. and. Uh, I mean, what's the take on what's the take on wings? You got to give us that. Uh, yeah, I definitely like food, wings for sure, but only bone in. Yeah, th- <laughs> Bo- boneless wings are just chicken nuggets. Chicken yes. Nuggets. <laughs> should be a should be a misdemeanor to serve boneless wings in Buffalo. Yeah. And call them wings. I don't care if you serve them. <laughs> call them popcorn chicken or something, but don't call them <laughs> wings. Anyways, and you hear me continuously alluding to them as wings and not chicken wings and not buffalo wings. When you're in Buffalo, they're just wings. Like, you know, there's a Philly cheesesteak, but in Philadelphia, it's just a cheesesteak. In Buffalo, they're not buffalo wings. We just call them wings. So if you didn't already have that, now you got that one with you when you come in. So Good, good. Steve drops a line every interview so far, just so you know. (laughs) I'm just trying to make sure everyone's well-informed, and I I like to talk. So it's both of us. (laughs) So do you have any questions for us? Yeah. The, the um, esteemed broadcasters, as you could tell, 
we are you yeah know, the, so the... it's a podcast or what is it exactly uh so we do a podcast <laughs> we do a podcast and then um just throughout the, the the journey of the podcast we somehow randomly got into broadcasting and then we got synced up with the buttes and now uh <laughs> Now we're we've been calling Butte Hockey for about four years now. Oh wow! Yeah. So at home, you'll see us two idiots standing over the penalty boxes on some scaffolding, or sometimes on a chair because we. But we call games from right behind the penalty boxes. Don't worry, okay. we're behind the visiting box. So if you take a penalty, <laughs> we won't chirp you. Uh, but we, yeah. So we call the games in uh, from Northtown Center, and Justin's actually been doing it a lot longer than me. I just came out mm -hmm. as play by play last year, but Justin does color, but. As he said, our podcast, we record once a week or so on Mondays talking Sabres and Bills, but also that we talk about the Buttes and the Bandits and the Junior Sabres and mm -hmm. the local amateur pro-am soccer team, pro soccer team. Like That's uh, what makes us a little different than a lot of podcasts in the area is that we give love to all the sports happening in Buffalo, not just the mainstream ones. So, Ooh, you listen to podcasts? Awesome. Are you a podcast listener? Yeah, I actually do. What's your fave? Um, I'm listening to this one right now called The Basement Yard. Okay, what's it about? It's like a comedy one, just these two guys just kind of, you know, talking about random stuff, but I find it funny. <laughs> and now you listen to the 716 Sports yeah. Podcast. It's <laughs> going up to the subscription list. Uh, no, we're just getting no pressure on that one. <laughs> I think, Justin, anything else for Whitney? I'm great. Thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate it. We hope to see you in Buffalo soon. We'll be sure to formally introduce ourselves because this is about as informal as it can get. Uh, <laughs> but we'll be we'll, we'll we'll be around the team a lot. You know, all things if the way be clear, we'll be around. Uh, hopefully, some practices and camp, and of course, on game days. So we look forward to meeting you formally. We look forward to watching you play and calling the games. And we really appreciate you taking fifteen minutes with us tonight to uh, talk about hockey and coming to the Buttes. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.